Is your stash looking like this? Or are you just looking for a way to make easy money? In this case, welcome to the Hatchling course. How you will learn how to make money the easiest and simplest way while watching Netflix. Now first off, with the new Scaf Karma there might be some changes, maybe the Scaf becomes more profitable depending on how they tweak it, but for now uh, he's just not, <laughs> so we're stuck with the PMC. Now first of all, what weapon and gear do we choose? And I already hear saying, but Hans, wait, Hatchling run? That's without any gear, right? And technically yes, but I would not recommend it. Because you don't want to be this guy right here. <laughs> without anything, you're completely defenseless. Anybody can hunt you across the map, or even a scaf can end you. So you don't want to be that guy. So okay, but what weapon then? Now, for example, MP shotgun is pretty suitable for the task. Because you want a weapon that has potential, but also a weapon that gets returned by insurance very often, so a weapon that nobody will pick up. For example, like the MP shotgun, 25k at Jaeger depending on the version. Because when you get it back via the insurance, it's basically for free, so you don't have to buy new ones, you constantly get them back. And the MP shotgun can really mess up a chat's day with just one well-placed shot. I mean, from an almost hatchling to a beautiful M4, why not? It doesn't have to be an MP shotgun, it can be anything. For example, a PPSH does the same thing, won't get picked up, so also works. Just pick something that you get returned by insurance very often. But please, do me a favor and don't play pistols. They are so bad. And they cost 10,000 upwards, so you could buy a TOTS for that. <laughs> Not a problem, a pistol slot is basically always free, so people will just pick it up no matter what you have and you won't get it back. Then in terms of headsets, I also recommend that you buy a headset. It can be the cheapest one, but you want one. Because again, you don't want to be this guy. You want to hear what's around you so you can avoid it. With this run, you don't necessarily want confrontation. So when you hear an enemy coming, you can reposition and avoid the fight prematurely. Also headset, you give them back very often by insurance. And even if you don't, come on, I mean, the first room that you're gonna hit will yield you, I don't know, three to five headsets worth of money. So don't be cheap on that. Next, we have to learn how to use the gamma container to its maximum potential. What do I mean by that? Now, when you have a backpack, you usually want to have at least 10,000 rubles per slot worth of money inside. So a full backpack should yield 200,000. With the gamma container, we aim at half a million. That's pretty ambitious, right? Now, of course, you can put inside valuables, but the magic starts with a dock case. Because inside that dock case, you can put a lot of things that you commonly will find in raid. Add an AKS handguard on top of it and you also have space for a lot of attachments. And also on one slot. Now the item you want here is the AKS 47 whatever you see it on the screen. And the important part is you have to also buy an AKS tube. This way you can put the handguard on the tube and it becomes just one slot in size. Perfect, right? If you have a key tool with all the keys of course also bring that. If not, don't worry about it. You can buy all that later when you have all the money. Then I recommend that you also bring some heals because you don't want to die because of a simple bleeding, that would be a pity, and painkillers can help you if you have a blacked out leg and want to reach the exit. So now what? Hmm. First off you have to choose a map. But for that we first need to understand what we want. We want to fill the dog's case and all the weapon attachment slots on the tube. Now, most SSD drives and so on are found in drawers, keys and jackets. Now, safes also have a lot of them. And of course, for attachments, we are looking for weapon crates. And as you can see, every map has those items. I wouldn't recommend woods or factory, but I think that's self-explanatory. Now, reserve is arguably the best map for that, as it has the most dense loot. When you spawn, you want to head to the first building you see, and then just start looting. Check jackets for keys, check crates for gear or weapon attachments. If you find them, put them in your pouch, onto the handguard and it's yours. Nobody can take it away anymore. And then you just keep doing that. Check drawers for everything useful, put it in your dog's case if you find it. 
and so on and so forth. Keep going, then head to the next building. If you die on the way, who cares? Not too bad. But if not, you just keep going. Loot everything you find, try to put it in your pouch. But the goal here is really to fill your pouch, not to fill backpacks or rigs. So it's best to not even pick up backpacks or rigs so that you really stay focused on your pouch. It's a good practice. Now, eventually you will be full and have to even throw things out. That's the point where you want to extract or, you know, take the fast extract. <laughs> now, when it comes to selling, the real magic starts. Of course, we have yeah, valuables and stuff and, you know, ammunition. If you can use them, keep it. Then remove the attachments and now the dock case. And this is a lot of money inside here. And those are things that you will commonly find in drawers all the time or in safes. Now, you can see the difference here. If we sell the valuables to therapists, and those were pretty good ones. 80,000, 90,000, not too much. Weapon attachments, also not much. Keys, a bit unlucky here. You can find very valuable keys. But now, the diaries to fans. You can see that's almost 300,000 rubles. That's a lot of money. And in total, it was around 400,000, which is okay. You can make more. And if you survive, you can sell a lot of stuff found in raid on the flea market, making even more money. And this isn't unusual. You can have very good runs with a lot of loot inside, found in raid because you survive, and then you can easily make a million rubles with those runs. And if you die, not too bad, then it's half a million. It's not all too bad half a million, right? <laughs> now, the more you do those runs, the more you get to know the map. And eventually you will learn where common weapon spawns are, where attachment spawns are, gear, heals, provision. You will really get used to the map and know where to look for if you need something specific. And then, the run evolves to the very famous and very popular zero to hero run. Now, the goal here is basically the same. Go in with as little as possible and go out with as much as possible. And as said, you can do those runs on pretty much every map. I think more important than the loot is how much you like the map and how good you know the map. That's way more important at the start. So pick a map that you already know pretty well to get started. Now, if you find items in raid and you don't know what they're worth, I will link a website where you can look up all the items in Tarkov, what they're worth on the flea market currently and what they're worth sold to traders. This can help you to decide which items to keep in your pouch and which one to throw out. Now, in order to learn the map's key locations and so on, I don't have a video on that. But I can really recommend the ones from Pestily. At least I enjoyed watching them and learned a ton from it. And with time, you will learn more and more about each map and really get used to it. And at the end, as said, you can watch Netflix while doing those runs, basically doing it blindly. Now there's one more topic. Hatchlings are not really liked by the community at all. And on one hand, I really get why. But on the other hand, the thing I'm experiencing is that most hatchlings that I meet in game are not new players. Those hatchlings that I meet are level 30, 40, just two, three weeks after wipe. So very experienced players that just do it to get the money very fast so they can play their meta gear or whatever in the next run. And while I agree that hatchlings are pretty frustrating because while well, they go in without any risk and can take a ton of loot with them, basically leaving you none. But on the other hand, I think it's just fair when everybody knows about these tactics, even the new ones, so that it is again an even playfield. But I'm aware the video will probably get a lot of dislikes, so <laughs> if you enjoy the content, uh, please thumbs up. <laughs> And yeah, maybe it get changed in the future, maybe it get patched out, we don't know. Nikita doesn't like it as far as I know, so maybe there's some change in the future. But for now, it's probably the most lucrative way to make money in Tarkov. Um, yeah, that's it. So as always, if you enjoyed the video, thumbs up, subscribe for more, tell me in the comment section how it went, or if you have any questions. Again, we have a community Discord, so if you want to join, chat, give feedback, whatever, link in the description box below. 
and then I'll see you all in the next video. Happy grinding!